Uh, welcome, this is Ottoman reporting live from uh, rainy Sofia and we are here with Augusto Bergueno um, who just uh, gave uh, a presentation at the FeeSim workshop on e-infrastructures uh, here in the hotel uh, behind. So uh, welcome. Hello. Uh, so can you just briefly explain what your role is in the European Commission? Yes, I am head of the e-infrastructures and science cloud unit in DigiConnect. Uh, and I am responsible for the funding of the e-infrastructure projects, the uh, projects that are supposed to be the foundation of the European Open Science Cloud. Yeah, so in the, uh, the, the European Open Science Cloud, that's about the, uh, the uh, connecting uh, researchers and about data infrastructures. It, it's not about the data infrastructure itself, because that's, it's not about Euro HPC, for instance. No, 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 no. Euro, Euro HPC is a different project. This is not about this is not about the deployment of new infrastructure. This is about making the existing infrastructure accessible to all European researchers. How many researchers are you? Well, I mean, the, uh, I think in the slide I put 1.7 million yeah. in Europe. It's really a lot. Uh, so the European Open Science Cloud vision is already there since a number of years. And um, what's the status uh, today? So, well, f since a number of years, well, the, the, um, we have been um, using the concept of enabling access to existing infrastructures already for many years. Uh, in the past, we used to have initiatives focused on different technologies. For example, we used to have uh, distributed computing and uh, we had the EGI as an initiative or data infrastructures like UDAT or Geon for networking. So that has always been our, our approach to enable access to existing infrastructures. Mm -hmm. The European Open Science Cloud um, concept was uh, put forward two years ago and we have just recently um, published a staff working document where we explain what we've done so far and what will come in the next, uh, in the next uh, few years. Uh, the status of development is that we have um, one major project, um, um, EOS Hub, which is a 30 million euro project with 100 um, uh, participants and they are supposed to develop the what we refer to as in the um, uh, staff working document as the federating core so they are going to develop all the enabling services uh, that will allow uh, researchers to access existing infrastructure existing services uh, we also have um, uh, open Air advance which is a 10 million euro project uh, to cover for the services that are required for the, um, uh, the publishing uh, part of research, the, uh, um, the um, publishing of data as well. Uh, and we have um, uh, another initiative which is called Freya, which is a project for persistent identifiers uh, and also complementary activities like the Research Data Alliance that is supposed to facilitate the development of uh, uh, standards and recommendations for data sharing. Um, there are other initiatives which are also important, like the EOSC pilot, which is a project which is looking at different governance models uh, and also contributing to, uh, to the overall concept. And uh, another project which is the e Infra Central, which is mm -hmm. developing a catalogue of services that will be reused uh, in the European Open Science Cloud. Yeah, so there are already a number of projects, but uh, if you look at the total amount of money, it's, uh, you could say, still quite modest. So what are the, the total plans for, say, until the end of Horizon 2020 for the funding? So, um, uh, well, it's, it's difficult to uh, pinpoint exactly how much money goes for this initiative yeah. because this initiative builds on existing e infrastructures. So uh, the projects that I mentioned uh, are, um, you know, if you include Geon, it's about uh, 100 million euro. There is a more budget coming in 2020 in the order of 80 million euro, uh, and the, um, but the idea is to complement the funding that is um, already invested at member state level for the actual uh, deployment and maintenance of research infrastructures. So overall, uh, when you look at the federating core and the um, federated entities, which will be provided by member states, regions and, and institutions, uh, we, are, we are talking about uh, um, hundreds of millions, of course. So it's, it will be a, a federated infrastructure? Yes. And you mentioned entities, so what will be the entities that will be federated? Well, I mean, I can think about all the all the um, research infrastructures that are already existing, like, um, I mean, if you want an example, for example, Elixir would be one, so we expect that a project like, I mean, an infrastructure like Elixir will make available resources 
uh, and services through the European Open Science Cloud uh, and as well the uh, resources that are now made available through infrastructures like UDAT, mm -hmm. EGI, Geon. We also expect the NREs to, uh, to um, uh, provide services through the European Open Science Cloud. Mm -hmm. So a large number of, uh, a large number of federated, federated entities, yes. So it's, it's not about federating, let's say, countries, like, for instance, Jeon does. It federates NRENS, National Research Network, but it's federating at a it's, more uh, it's, it's about level. It's about enabling access to services. Yeah. Uh, the, the federation, um, uh, I mean, the concept of federation reflects how the different uh, allocation of responsibilities will be, uh, will be allocated. So when you look at the, what we call the federating core, Necessarily, there must be somebody who provides identity and access management services uh, that takes care of security, that has accounting uh, services to know how much resources have been used, and so on and so forth. Uh, but but what we are we are we consider um, uh, that the, the key element of the European Open Science Cloud is the provision of services and enabling access to those services. So, and what will be the plans for the for the coming years? What will be the focus so points? We in, still, uh, in the time frame of Horizon 2020, there will be a, another call uh, in 2020, as I said uh, before. And uh, I, the budget we have is about 80 million euro. Uh, at least that was announced uh, like this in the in the work program, in the draft work program. When we, in the work program, when we presented it in um, uh, in, in the in the last uh, program committee. And the, um, the idea is to continue supporting the development of the federating core and also support service providers uh, um, to cover the cost of access, so the cost they incur when uh, new users access their services. In FP9, we'll see. Uh, thank you very much for this interview. Okay, my pleasure. Thank you. Um, this was Art Emin reporting live from Sofia. <laughs>